Hey everyone, DW Berman here again with the uh, character animator lip sync stuff. Only this time, we're not doing anything with character animator. What I am doing is sharing my nodes with you. So here we have my node setups. I am making them available for free at liberty3d.com. There's a download link here. You can see some previews of what the nodes look like. I have updated the uh, image selector node, although I have not updated the any of the information on the page yet. So also has a couple links to the videos that I posted about this that kind of get you up to speed on what the nodes do and how they're set up. But rather than go through all the tedious effort of setting it up, you can simply download the zip file and have the nodes in your possession and you can just load them into your project. How do you do that? Well, it's quite simple. We have this project here. I'm not gonna worry about the model. I'm just gonna create a new geometry, a new cube, just so we have something, we're not going to save this. So this will be our character. I'm going to switch the VPR, and there we can see it. Shift click on our surface. And here we have our basic node setup that comes standard with Lightwave now in 2018. So uh, what I want to do is I want to right click, import nodes, and you'll have these nodes. There's basically only three. Um, those these three right here is what comes in the file. So I'm going to select the image type node. This is the most complicated one in a way. Uh, so I'll hit open and here's a big mess that comes in. Now what's going on with this? Well we have uh, a, a bunch of... A, basically all you have to worry about are the nodes over here. This is all you mainly have to worry about. And also the output is what you plug into color. And now we have our image on the node. For this, um, what you won't see in this version here is that um, the mouth shapes that I used when setting up this project were not the same image size. You will want your mouth shapes to all be the same image size. You can see here I have some that are not very tall and some that are very tall and the images themselves are different sizes. So what you want to do is you want to put your mouth shapes in images that are all the same size. So um, first of all, Let's add a null object into the scene, and we'll make this mouth selector null. Mouth select null, and that just gives me a null. And um, I'm gonna set a keyframe on came. Set a keyframe on frame. Yeah, 15, and I'm gonna make this 1.5. So not 1.5 meters. Yeah. That is what I want, 1.5 meters. So uh, what we want to do up here on our item info, we're going to select the item to use to drive the mouth shapes. In this case, I'm going to double click on it and select it, mouth select null. You can see there we have on frame 15, we have our frowny face and we have our different mouth shapes going all the way from zero, all the way to one to 15. If you notice over here on the mouth selector gradient and the other, uh, other nodes I did, we have a number in front of the uh, the mouth shape. This number corresponds to um, the selection. So basically the way I'm animating here in this scene is I have uh, basically 0 to 1.5 is our range of animation. Um, and if you take, you know, if you look at it as if this decimal point isn't there, it's 15. So 15 is our alternate, in which case I'm using it as a frowny. Frowny face. Um, anyway, we selected our control object. We just have a null that we're moving up and down in order to control that. Um, this is just the, the position of that is being plugged into the vector scaler. The vector scale, vector selector is um, selecting which channel we're going to use. And in my case, I'm going to use the Y channel because I'm animating the thing up and down. And this selector multiplier here is in case you want to animate on something other than, you know, 0 to 1.5 maybe you want to just go to 0 to 15 and not worry about the uh the, the fraction there or the decimal there so we just have this multiple we can change this selector multiplier the purpose of this is just to make sure that we get our integers into the gradient node itself which is in here but we're not going to worry about that right now um, we have this little logic probe thing here this will tell us our values we have 1.5 coming out of there. We need it to be 15. So in order to make it 15, we're multiplying it by 10. 
That's all that is. Uh, right here we have our mouth background node. This sets the background color for all of the mouth shapes. All of these are, you can think of these as stickers that go on top of a surface. This is what pipes in the surface into all of those nodes. So if I right click or double click on it, I can change the, the value of the background color. You could also plug uh, a whole bunch of other gradients or you can plug whatever other objects or whatever other surface settings you're using. You can plug that into foreground color and that will become the background for all of these things. Um, I have a, I've broken out the image scale position and rotation so we can change the uh, position on these things. And we can change the scale on these things. So I'll say 0 0.85 if I want it to be narrower. And there we have a better looking frown. But again, this uh, set of images is not optimized for use. But you're not getting the set of images. It's part of the stuff that comes with Character Animator. So I'm not distributing that. Um, anyway, so we can control the the position of our image position, scale, and rotation of our image through here. If you want to change the mapping, if you change these, uh, if you're smart and you use UV mapping, you won't need to worry about those. You'll just have to come in, into every one of these uh, images here and uh, set your mapping type to UV and set your UV map. And this is also where you set your images. Um, when you load this up, you probably won't have all of these images because I'm not including them you'll just have to come in here and uh, select your mouth shapes that correspond to the name of the node. So in this case, I'm looking for the ah shape. If you have a mouth image shape like that, you select it here. I think that's fairly self-explanatory. And after you go through uh, setting up all these things here, again, you're setting up your the, the connection to the node that you are driving it with, and you're setting your background and you're setting your images and you're positioning everything together so that it all fits where it should go. The output of that then goes into whatever surface uh, setting you're using and that goes out to the material. So that's the basic setup for the images. So let's uh, check out the, the other one, the morph. So let's uh, move my camera over to the side. Zoop. And let me see if I can find that. <laughs> see if I can find that. Uh, object that I used for this test. This looks promising. It's facing the wrong way. We are professionals here. Yep, there we go. There's our mouth shape. So to get the, the morph works, you have to imagine that you have your head loaded in and you have all of the uh, mouth shapes uh, morphs set up for it. And uh, we can now click on our properties and nodal displacement. There are other ways to do this, but I'm using nodal displacement. And now I can import nodes and select one of the other types. So I have the gradient type again. I can plug that in here, plug the output into the input and uh, m click off so that not everything is selected. I want to, again, set up my mouth null selector to drive the animation. Uh, again, this is going through a vector selector and a multiplier to make sure that the results are what we want. OK, so the next step is to double click on these nodes and select the morph maps that correspond with the mouth shape. And it uh, looks like. Yeah, it looks like that if your mouth, uh, if your morph map is named the exact same way, then it'll automatically uh, link up and you don't need to do that step. So cool. But um, hmm, this isn't working, so that should have been moving. Uh, I'll try this again, just in case it needed to register. Nope, still not working. So I'm going to have to do a little troubleshooting here. Oh, there's the problem. I forgot to check the uh, the actual checkbox for node displacement. But again, yep, I had it nodal displacement selected wrong. Uh, let's put subdivision after that. There we go. Okay, now we're back in business. So yeah, if you have your uh, vector maps, uh, your your V maps uh, named 
the exact same way. It looks like it'll carry over and you won't have to select it. Um, there is another mode here. Let me double click my uh, nodal displacement again. And uh, let's get rid of these. We'll get rid of that. And then we'll do add node again. Nope. Want to go to edit import nodes. We have our other type, our logic type. This one is a, a longer looking setup, but it's basically the same input. You drag your the output into the input of the displacement. And under the item info, you select the object you are using to drive your animation. And here we go again. It's all set up and, and working perfectly. That's great. It's fantastic. I should point out that you don't have to use an item info node here to drive a scalar. Uh, to change into a scalar to multiply, you can ignore all of this stuff. Um, I'm just going to click off of that. You can go into your nodes over here and do scalar and just drive that directly through here. And there is our, uh, our 0 and neutral, or 0 and 12 are the neutral position. So if I do that, it'll be the same there. I don't know why I did that. I don't remember, but there was a reason. Uh, scalar 1 is uh, the uh shape, so that might throw you off because, again, I have this multiplier here to um, alter this. So if I change the scalar on the multiplier to 1, now we can animate on, on whole numbers. So, so now when I do 2, it'll be the, the D shape, and if I do 3... It'll be the, uh, what is that, the E, 4 is F. Uh, however, if I want to do 0.4 instead for the F shape, then I would have to come over here and change this to 10. So there we go again. Um, and of course, just having a flat number in here is not going to be very helpful. So if you click on the E, that opens up our graph editor. And I can, you know, you can change your your values here. I'm, I'm on the wrong one. I don't want to be on, I want to be on the shape selector. There we go. There we go. That's a point 0.4. One thing that's fairly important that I should point out is that you want, most of the time, you will want your keys here to be set to stepped so that we don't slide through all the different mouth shapes between the different modes. Um, if I do this, if I don't have that set to stepped, and I set it to TCB spline, which is the default, you'll notice that as the uh, that the mouth moves through all the different mouth shapes as it's animating on the timeline. So in order to avoid that, you want to make sure that stepped is on or put a keyframe on every single frame. So probably, probably you don't want to do that. So um, that covers pretty much everything I wanted to say. Again, it's pretty simple. Uh, the way it's set up is to just set up an object to move up and down for your control to control the mouth. You can parent that to your character object if you want, or you can plug anything else in uh, into this uh, shape selector input and just make sure that you set it up so that what's coming in here or basically you want it set up so that the output will eventually get to be an integer so thanks for watching i hope this was uh, uh useful for you and exciting <laughs> and uh, feel free again to grab the nodes at uh, liberty3d.com and right now, in the month of May 2018, we're celebrating our 8th anniversary of being a resource for LightWave and other applications. So we have a coupon code, L3D 8 Years Strong, and that will get you 25% off um, most products on our store. So thanks again for watching, and uh, have a great day.